Welcome to the Catbird Quilts. I'm Kathy Martin. And today's video is how to make your first quilt with men's dress shirts, part one. And I have a lot to say about it. Shocker. So let's get started. I quilt with men's dress shirt fabrics and I, that's what I had in the beginning as well. If you watched any of my previous videos, you know I actually started quilting with men's dress shirts. And so I watched a slew of my first quilt videos because I didn't know what I was doing. And that's where you, that's what you do when you don't know what you're doing, you go to YouTube. And there are some great videos out there, but there weren't any that showed me how to get from I have this pile of fabric that were men's dress shirts to starting on my first quilt. So that's what my hope is for this video series, that I can walk you slowly through the process, step by step, not just the sewing, not just the piecing, but also fabric selection and color choices so that when you get done with this, this is your first unique quilt. Um, and so whether you're a true beginner and have never sewn or quilted, or you're a sewist who has made a million other projects, or you know your way around a sewing machine, but you've never quilted, or maybe you have quilted in the past, but it's been a while, or you might even be an experienced quilter, but you've never used men's shirts to quilt with. And it's a kind of a thing, it's different. It requires a little, little thought on in areas that maybe you don't have to if you've quilted in other ways. Uh, so that's whether, no matter where you are on the spectrum, true beginner, experienced quilter, my hope is that you will find this video to be informative and helpful and that when we're done with this whole series, you'll have your very first quilt made with men's dress shirts. One quick caveat, if you've come to me and you're not planning on using men's dress shirts, you just wanna make your first quilt, you can totally go to the fabric store and get two charm packs. Uh, and if you don't know what a charm pack is, that is a stack of 42 pre-cut five inch by five inch squares. And if you buy a charm pack from a manufacturer, all of those fabrics have been coordinated to go together. So you would get two of the same kind and you will make a, at the end of this, you will have a patchwork quilt. The quilt I chose, the quilt pattern I chose for you is not actually a pattern, like you can go out and buy this pattern. Maybe there's one out there. I looked for it, I didn't see it. But it's easy and it's made from squares, just squares, which is gonna put things in your favor uh, when you start quilting. And this is the quilt that we're going to make in this video series. And you may notice it's gingham, which is my favorite. So it's like a gigantic gingham and it's made with two colors and white. So just three colors, patterns, shirts, three. You're just gonna use three of something um, to make this quilt. And the squares are a little bit larger, which means that there's, um, it's a little bit easier when you're putting rows together and pieces together. So we're not working with these teeny tiny little pieces that cause problems down the line. So we're gonna be making this and the interesting about making this particular quilt is this is the sample that I made, but the one that we make together, the one that you will watch me make in this video, if you stay with me, it will look similar and it will be gingham, but I've now used, these were shirts, this navy with white polka dot, that was a shirt. The blue with yellow and white flowers, that was a shirt and the white was actually may have been multiple shirts, but it's just a white shirt. So these shirts have now been used up. And so I won't be, I wouldn't be able to make this quilt again if I wanted to, which I don't, because it's unique. I use those fabrics and now they're gone. And so that's part of the appeal for me in using thrifted men's shirts is 
None of my quilts are the same. I could make the exact same quilt six times and none of them will be the same. And so that's what I'm gonna show you how to do. So we're gonna start with the understanding of the pattern. Um, and what that is, you can see there is a dark blue, a medium blue, and then a white. And that's what makes a gingham pattern. So it's dark, medium, dark, medium, and so forth. And then that same medium and then white. And so then that alternates. So what I am gonna use for that, for this quilt, for our quilt together, is I have picked another dark blue and then I picked a lighter blue. And then when I went to put, to cut my squares and put it together, I realized that my one of my blue shirts was actually small enough that I wasn't sure I was gonna get enough squares out of it. And sometimes that happens with men's dress shirts. And that's something that you need to be thoughtful about. So what I did, I found another lighter blue. They're similar, not exact. And so I did half of the medium in one shirt fabric and half of the, the medium color um, blue in another that is coordinating. And we're gonna talk about this more as we go, but I wanted you to have that in the beginning. So let's say you're collecting men's dress shirts and you're gonna do this and you want your, your quilt to be gingham like mine. You're gonna need a pile of dark five by five squares and then you can do all of your mediums from the same shirt if your shirt is large enough, or you might wanna find a very similar, doesn't have to be exact, similar color so that you'll have some of one and some of the other, and then a stack of whites to go with it. So we're gonna talk about how much fabric, how, how much fabric we're gonna need. But first, for people I have discovered through this process, both my own quilting and talking to other quilters and then now in comments and YouTube viewers that some people have difficulty visualizing how to put fabrics together. And that's part of what is makes pre-cut quilt kits um, appealing or going to the fabric store and you choose a line of fabrics that's been made to go together. And that's kind of like the charm pack situation. If you have difficulty visualizing, number one, you're not alone. Number two, takes a little practice. Number three, you can shortcut it for yourself. Um, and I'm gonna do that for you by giving you some examples so you can go, oh, well, that's not that hard. And so that's my hope for this next little part. So let's get to that. So when I put together this, our example quilt, uh, I chose the navy first, and then I knew that I wanted to do this gingham effect, which meant that I ne which <laughs> gingham effect, which meant that I was going to need a lighter blue to pair with it, and this navy happens to be so dark it almost looks black. So to give you an example, if I had used this lighter blue that we're gonna use for the quilt we make together, you can see as I lay this out that it would not have had the impact that I wanted because the blue is too light. And so that was a consideration and maybe a consideration for you. If you decide to do a dark blue and a medium blue, you wanna make sure that your dark blue and your medium blue are in the same hue. So they have the same brightness, they have the same, they're kind of in the same color family um, that you don't get your lights too light. Likewise, if I had gone for a, I could have even gone darker on my medium blue, but if, based on the shirts I had, my medium blue that was a little bit darker than this one was a little too muted. Let me show you. So you can see this is, this will be the dark blue in the quilt we're gonna make together. It would have worked potentially 
but then the contrast between the medium blue and the white is too great. And this blue that I'm gonna be using is actually fairly muted as opposed to the really intensely navy dark square. So I just wanted you to see when I was making those decisions, when I laid out the shirts that I had, that I had cut down to just pieces of fabric, I laid out all my blues on my table and this medium blue that I settled on was the closest one in terms of brightness and hue and how close it was to the navy that I chose first. So those were our blues. I'm gonna give you like a little mini parade of possible options that you can use. And if you'll remember, the gingham pattern is dark, medium, and white. So I'm gonna leave my white squares out and I'm gonna give you some possible options that you might have in your thrift shirt stash. So here's a purple for you. This is our dark, this is our medium. You can see it's close to the white, but also close to the purple, and that would work beautifully. Here we have a solid pink, and even though it's light, that would be our dark, a white and pink pattern, and our white. So the white and pink becomes our, our medium, our white is our white, and this light pink is actually our dark. Here we have kind of a terracotta dusty rose and this particular medium shirt is actually uh, pretty intense but it has enough white in it that that becomes our blend. So this is an example of how to use a plaid with a predominant color as the background. So this is our dark, this is our medium, and obviously our white is our white. Here we have a clay, well this is the color of clay in Alabama, and a peach and a white. So this again, this is actually what I would consider a medium value color, but in this pairing, this is the dark, the peach plaid is the medium, and then our white. And I think that's lovely. Here we have an orange linen and a orange gingham together, which I think this would actually be hysterical because it's a gingham quilt made out of gingham. But orange and then the gingham because it's got a white background makes it lighter and then our white. So again, that's a really good possible combination. And you could do this in blue too. So if you had a solid blue and a gingham, small gingham in that same color blue, it reads lighter. And so it works as a dark, medium, light, even though the orange gingham is the same color as our solid, but the solid reads darker. All right, so in this example, I've actually pulled two different medium fabrics. One of them is a shirt fabric, the other is a fat quarter. So our golden yellow becomes the dark, even though it's not especially dark. And then our golden and white striped Oxford cloth. And then this one is just a floral pattern that has a lot of white background. Much like the orange before it, the yellows are exactly the same color, but because this one is solid and these are on a white background, they look lighter. And so this would be an example, like if you did not have all of this shirt, you could could pair a similar color with it and essentially accomplish the same thing. And you don't have to use exclusively men's dress shirts. You can use, you can pair a dress shirt with a fat quarter or fabric or yardage from your fabric store and it will work just as well. So you don't have to get limited on just men's dress shirts. Here we have an aqua gingham gingham is a thing. And this is actually a pillowcase that I found at the thrift store. And so this is another example. This one, the colors are exactly the same in the gingham and the pillowcase or remarkably close. But because the pattern is spread out and there's even more white, this reads medium, this reads dark, and then we have our white. So this is a perfect example of you don't have to use even men's dress shorts, shirts, shorts, shirts, 
or fabric. You can use a pillowcase or an old sheet. Um, and that is a really, really lovely pairing and even lighter than some of our other ones, but it reads dark, medium, light. So here's an example of a really dark. So this is a forest green, very, very dark green, um, and a gingham. <laughs> it's a thing. Um, in, a, in that same dark green, but it blends the, this is very contrasty, but this becomes the blend between the two. And so if you happen to live in an area where a lot of your shirts are dark, dark, you can get a shirt that is in the same family. I wouldn't say exact again, it's, but it matches and it blends this very dark, together with the white. And again, that would just be really lovely. And actually, as I'm looking at that, it would make the gingham pattern that comes out in the end would be a really pretty Christmas quilt. So keep your options open. You never know how it might play together. So you might have to get your shirt fabrics out and put them together and see what you can make happen. Now that you've seen some possible options for color choices and maybe you've already started planning or have some inspiration for what sort of colors you're gonna to put together. Uh, we're, we've got to talk about fabric requirements. And that is something that if you are an experienced quilter, you obviously already know. If you're new to quilting, you will, and you get the bug, which you're gonna get the bug, you will buy a pattern at some point in your future and it will say fabric requirements and that's how you can figure out how many shirts you need how much how many squares you're going to need so in this pattern it's obviously alternating um, and we're going to start with a dark and end with the dark and when you count all these up if i held the whole thing up which i'm not going to we would end up with 40 medium colored shirts, 25 of the dark and 16 of the white. So for this quilt that we're gonna make, that's what you're gonna need. You may remember just a few minutes ago, I commented that I didn't have enough of one shirt to accomplish that. And that's why I ended up with the two different shirts. I have a video that's called How to Cut a Charm Pack from men's dress shirts. And I encourage you to take a little time and watch it because what you're gonna do, it will show you how to estimate and cut your charm pack. So essentially your five by five square, five, five by five inch squares. I have a hard time with that phrase. Um, out of your shirt fabrics. And so you can estimate or figure out if you, the shirts that you have will provide you with enough fabric. And you'll need to do that before our next step because our very next video, we're actually gonna put the quilt top together. So I encourage you, look through your dress shirts, look through your fabric stash, choose your colors. You want them to be the same degree of muted. You want them to be in the same color if you want it to be gingham. And then you're gonna cut your squares and make sure you have enough of each one. So if we were following a pattern, the fabric requirements for this are essentially it's two charm packs, but it, we're doing 40 medium, 25 dark, and 16 white. So when I was learning to quilt using YouTube tutorials, I would get so excited, okay, ready, it's almost like trailers, ready, here we go. And then I would get ready to do the next step and I would realize, oh shoot, I don't have needles. Or, oh, I didn't know I was gonna need the specific thread. And I would have to stop, put on my shoes, get my keys and my credit card and go to the craft store or the fabric store and buy a bunch of stuff and then blow half a morning and then come home and then I could start. So I wanted in our videos for you to know what you're gonna need for the next step. So I'm gonna give you 
all of the supplies that you need for the next video, which is gonna be sewing your quilt top and piecing it together. So the first thing you're gonna need is a self-healing mat. This one is 12 by 18. If you can get an 18 by 24, it gives you a little bit more coverage, uh, but you definitely need something to cut on. You're gonna need a ruler. This one is three and a half by 24 inches. That's an excellent size that you'll get a lot of mileage out of. You're gonna need thread, 100% cotton, 50 weight is a great weight to start with. This is Aurafil. There'll be a link in the description down below. Actually, there's a link in the description down below of all of this. Uh, so I would get white or a pale gray or a beige pale light tan. You're gonna need a pair of small scissors or snips. I actually have three examples for you here. Uh, so there's this one, these are both snips is what these are generally called. And then this is just a, a pair, small pair of scissors with a very sharp tip on the end. That's gonna be very helpful for, for you in this process. A rotary cutter to use on your self healing mat to cut your fabric. And then you might need a seam ripper. I hope you won't, but you might. And so always good to have a seam, which I call seam reaper on this channel. You're gonna need uh, some pins to pin your pieces together so that you can keep them straight as you sew them. I really like ones that have a ball or something on the end so that it's easy to pull them out as you're sewing. If you don't have those or if you don't wanna get them, that's totally fine. You just need a good pin. And then you may need new needles for your sewing machine. So that's gonna be, I have two different types here. Uh, I use the 90 slash 14 because the internet told me to. Uh, if you know why that is, you're welcome to comment that in the comment section below. You can also use the 75 slash 11. Um, again, so I've been told. These are universal. This one actually says quilting needle, they're the same, but basically you're looking for a 90 uh, over 14 or 90 slash 14. You're gonna need a sewing machine, kind of a one of those Captain Obvious, but need a sewing machine. And then this is just a stack of our fabric. You're also gonna need an iron to press seams to make your quilt piecing come together well. So those are all the supplies that you're gonna need for the next video. So before you come back next time, you're gonna need to get your fabric, cut it into five inch by five inch squares, preferably with your our rotary cutter on your self-healing mat and get your supplies together so that when we start the next video, you don't find yourself frustrated without the tools that you need. Also, if you are a true beginner and you have never sewn before, uh, if you wanna, it's like stay after class, you know, when you are in math and things, it's not coming together and the teacher says, just stay after class. We'll, we'll go over that. So after, the video is over and it does the little, the catbird quilts, I have a lot to say, check me out on. After that, I'm gonna do a quick, basic sewing tutorial. And you can watch that and come back to it if you need to, so that when you come to the next video, you'll be ready to sew. I am so excited. Thank you for being here with me. Let's make your first quilt. I'm Kathy Martin. This is the Catbird Quilts. Thanks for watching. So now that you've given... So when I was learning to quilt using YouTube... 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 YouTube...